Hey guys, Ken Smith, Ken Smith Fishing. If you've just found this series of videos, so this is uh, video number seven of what I've called the Great Bass Boat Search of 2020-2021. The title to this video actually is, watch this video before you buy a bass boat. So what I'm doing is I am spending a day in a whole bunch of different glass bass boats. We're hoping to do 10 boats next. But Basically spending a day in them. I'm searching for a new boat. I currently run a Ranger. Uh, and so this is the seventh video. We've now, this will be our fourth boat review. We've got a bunch more to come. So I think you'll enjoy this. If you're interested in buying a new or used bass boat anytime soon, you might enjoy this, uh, this video. There's a playlist as well. But uh, let's jump right in. We, uh, we spent a little bit of time in a Ranger Z520 L boat. It's our first L boat we've been in. And uh, let's just do a little walk around on this boat. All right, boys. So uh, I've been fishing today in a Z520L boat. And I got to tell you, it, it reminds me a great deal of my sea boat uh, with, with very, very little difference. It's got a little different dash configuration. Uh, they've moved all the buttons down here for everything. It's a different type of pad than what I had in mind. Uh, but otherwise, it's it's real similar. Um, it's real, real similar. Although Jones can still get. Oh, it's not actually. It goes way forward, so it's probably the same size as mine. Uh, they have they've gotten rid of that ice chest in this boat. In my boat, you recall there's an ice chest here, so that's all rod box. This is, I believe, that's the main ice chest, isn't it, Chris? Mm -hmm. So that's the main ice chest. The back deck, I think, is an identical setup. I think there's no difference at all. They changed the shocks on this. I like the box. It's a positive lock, so you don't have to turn it. You just open it, and when it closes, it locks. What else have I noticed different about this boat? I've not been in the sump. Excuse me, Sam. <laughs> I can't get it open. Oh, look, they gave him a prop spot. That was one of the things you recall I grabbed about my boat. There's no real place to put it, so they figured out how to get the batteries to the side. And they give you a place to carry a spare prop. Chris, have you been in the sump on this boat? Do you have to pull the battery charger? Not to get to the boat. Okay, so there you go. So you can get that flooring, you can see screws down, and you can pull that out without uh, having to remove, like with mine, I've got to take the, uh, I got to take the charger to get to it. So, same remote plug access. Uh, man, I mean, it's so, so similar to my 520, my, my 520C and even my 521. Uh, the boat, and, and I think I can confirm this with most of my buddies who are running L boats, it does not have the lift of the C boats and it's slower. But otherwise, the ride feels really really similar uh, talking to Chris he's had no no fit and finish issues so he's had no issues out of the boat uh, and this is a 20 correct mm -hmm. how long have you had the boat so he's had the boat now six or seven months and had no problems out of the boat which is nice to hear uh, he is running the Garmin trolling motor which he really really likes by the way love it I like to kill all of us in it, but I will note, you'll see in the fishing video later, that somebody falls out of the boat, and it was not a trolling motor issue. I'm not going to I'm not going to say who it was. I will say, as we've talked about in the past, there very well may have been a flip-flop issue involved. I've told you guys that flip-flops will be the death of me. But I'm not saying who got in or who got out, but what I will say is, Sam don't have on flip-flops. <laughs> Jones and I have on flip-flops, so there you go. Uh, same setup for the co-angler. He's a single console guy, but I mean, this is exactly the same setup my single console 520C was. The seats are bigger than my seats, but I'll be honest, I still don't like the seats. I just don't, they're not comfortable. Uh, they're, they're like sitting on a Barco lounger and I feel like I can still bottom out in them. But again, that's my opinion. So take it for what you want. So they increased the size of this box versus the sea boat. I, I don't know if there's a bottom in there or not, but there seems to be quite a bit of plastic. This boat would probably be 
23 miles an hour faster if I loaded this boat than the way it's loaded right now. Uh, I'll give you all some external views on the boat. Uh, you see same cleat setup as mine. I like those recessed feet, but again, there is no uh, there is no driver side cleat, which is something I've really discovered I like in a lot of boats. You see Chris has got it set up with one giant Garmin uh, on the dash. He's a single Garmin guy. One thing I don't like about the elbow, step to the left for me, Chris, is now they've got this, they've got this kind of turned sideways now. Yeah, there's an edit there. So what you'll see is Chris uses the precision sonar uh, uh, mount and you look down there, you see those screws. You can actually twist that, I believe, or you can make your units square to the to the bow line. He likes that because he says it's easier to get in and out of the boat. Easier which, to get your accessories over to yeah. your trim switches. And again, I still do not like the trim switches there, which they should be over there. Uh, that's such a simple fix. I don't know why Ranger hadn't thought about that. Probably because engineers don't bass fish very much. Uh, but everything else, it's a real similar setup to mine. You'll notice, I, with mine, that was a removable plate, and I pulled that off. That's a little cleaner looking. But again, I guess the way the boat was set, they had to turn that sideways. But you can buy, so by the way, if you flush mount a graph down there, it is gonna be turned sideways to the direction you're fishing, which is why guys have all gone to those precision sonars to allow you to lift that up. If you've not fished with the Garmin Trello motor, it is super duper fast. And it seems to be super quiet too. So I have been impressed with that. Not part of the not part of the boat review, but uh, certainly something that I was impressed with, the power of it. We talked about how guys set their boats up. Chris set his boat up, as you saw there, with his up and down power pole switches left and right, which is probably pretty smart as long as you don't step on the one getting in and out of the boat. You know, I've got both mine mounted to the left, but that's something different than the way I set mine up. I didn't notice what he's using this box for. Trash. Ah, it's his trash box. And one apple. I guess he's going to see the school teacher later. <laughs> he could do that. I mean, it's just a really similar boat to mine. So it got an oxygenator in it? Yes. You got a trailer brake? Uh, yes. So you got basically the same upgrade package I did. Yes. And mine's got four... All four tires got brakes on it. On this, this first one, the elbow that I've had, it's got it, and it'll stop my truck. It's awesome. No Best kidding. trailer I've had. Yeah. There you go. All right, I'm going to ask him a question on camera and see if he'll answer me. If you were going to change two things about this boat, what would you change? Mm, I don't know. I ain't sure I'd think about that one on camera. I know one of them. What's that? You'd want to go faster. Yeah. I mean, it's. It's not a speed boat, but it does have a good ride, good dry ride. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm pretty happy with it, pretty much. Yeah. As far as that goes. As I said in the first video, they're Ranger fast. That's right. They're rain How fast is it? It's Ranger fast. Of course, it could be because there's not exactly. I mean, there's three a lot small stuff. guys. There's a lot. There's three guys. It's full to the rim of tackle. You it's got a, more crap in here. It's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. A lot of stuff in here. So, back to my original statement about Rangers. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you one thing I'd change. I, I would change the trim switches for sure because I hit the aerator every time I'm on it. I mean, every time I hit the up and down, I fish shallow water all the time. Every time I go up and down with the trim switches, I turn the aerators on or off. So if I got fish alive, well, I got to make sure that it's back on. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. By the way, why can't somebody invent Bluetooth buttons like the big power pole buttons to lift your trolling or lift Great your big idea. motor up and down? Great idea. Yeah. Hey, somebody engineer that and give me a little piece of it for doing that, would you? So corner to, from there to the other carpet, what is it measure? Eight eighty-two inches. Okay, and then measure on the front. Let me circle around. Uh, I think that's pretty similar to this boat, which would make sense. I think the beams on them. I think where they cut it out is in the middle of the boat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I'm assuming it's probably the same. Which would explain why that boat's every bit as stable as this boat. Six foot. Yep, six that, foot. Exactly. 72 inches. 72 inches. Okay, so that's really interesting to me. So the 520 boat, 
uh, the C and the L, the, the measurements are the same on the C's and the L's as far as length and beam. So the 520 is 20 feet 11 inches, the 21, the 521's are 21 feet 8 inches. The 520's carry a 97 inch beam, the 521's carry a 98 inch beam. Uh, they both have the same, now again, we're comparing my 21C to a 20L, but interestingly, they have the same fishable space on the back deck, but get that, it's a full six inches wider at the seat pedestal on the front deck. My boat was 66 inches wide, this boat is 72 inches wide, so it is an incredibly wide boat right from the front of the boat. I mean, they just really kind of blew that front deck out. Uh, on uh, the way they set that boat up. And again, comparing the two boats, uh, the 520 uh, L boat weighs 1,850 pounds while my 521 C weighs 1,925. In both the boats, the L boats in the same length weigh 25 pounds more, uh, 1,825 versus 1,850 in the 520 and 1,925 versus 1,950 in the 521. So you get uh, a little bit more weight on the L boats than you do on the C boats. Uh, probably has something to do with that extra width on the front end. Okay guys, a quick walk around specifically on Chris's boat. Had a lot of traffic noises. I narrated this, so I'll dub it over. Uh, I think it's a really pretty boat, that gray and the blue. Uh, as you saw, he's got it rigged with the Garmin. It's got the, uh, the lights built into the bow. Uh, it's a uh, Ranger trailer. Uh, as I've talked about before, it's got a good jack on the trailer. Uh, it's a foldable jack, goes up underneath, it's got the little trailer step. He did not opt for the pawpaw steps you guys know I like. Um, got a good winch on the trailer, foldable tongue, trailer brakes. This particular package came with the Hambies as well. Uh, and then I guess the last thing, of course torsion axles as we've talked about before, but uh, the last thing on, the, on this trailer, according to Kit, uh, Chris, and I believe he knows his stuff. This is the first boat that they've put brakes on all four tires. So he said it's got great stopping power, which is obviously uh, a really nice add to the boat. So let's take it back to World Headquarters in Zvala and uh, let's grade the 520 L boat. Okay guys, so let's talk about the L boat and let's score it a little bit. Let me give you a little bit of my history with the L boat. So um, this is a couple of years ago. I believe this is still the case. If you wanted to have a deal, if you wanted to be a Ranger Pro Staff guy, you had to run an L boat. The C boat is a package boat. And what I mean by that is it comes packaged with electronics and power poles, and you can't change that. And, and, and when I bought mine, I had them send me, as I told you all before, my graphs in a box. And I, I, it was, they were Lowrance back then. I got rid of the Lowrance and sold them, and I put my hummingbirds on my boat. But... If you wanted to be on the team, you had to be in an elbow. Well, as I recall, that was the first or second year of the L-boats. They were a relatively unknown quantity. And I called a buddy of mine who was then and still is on one of the tours. Uh, he was at an event, and I said, I'm about to order a boat. Is there anything that I should or shouldn't put on my new L-boat? And he called me back, and he said, do not buy that boat. And that first year, they had... A fair number of problems, by the way, as you do with, with most boats in the first year. And there were, there were seat issues. Another buddy of mine, the, fit did, the seat didn't fit, and it rubbed a hole in the back of the seat. Just a lot of things with the L boat that guys weren't happy about. And one of the things they weren't happy about was the performance of the boat, and that hasn't changed. So everything I'm going to say to you here today, we all have buddies who whatever boat they're running right now is the greatest boat they've ever been in. But we've also all got buddies who say, well, here's the real story behind this boat. And that's the guys I'm really listening to across on all these boats. I mean, every boat manufacturer has a homer, right? A guy who's only going to say good things about them. So I'm going to score the 520 L series I'm going to score the L series. How about that? The 520 and the 521 based upon my knowledge from the little bit of time I got to spend in this boat and a tremendous amount of feedback, more feedback than I've gotten on any other boats. So we're going to score them exactly the same. You see on the, on the screen there how we're going to score. Uh, so let's start out with fissibility. So I'm going to score this boat 17, excellent. Uh, the gunnels are low. 
the deck is even wider at the front than my 521C, which is a much longer boat. It's that much wider. Now, you see I didn't do my tippy test. I walked off and left my level in, in the shop, so I didn't get to do it. But I can assure you, it is every bit as stable, if not more stable, than my sea boat, my longer boat. Traditional box layout, as I said before, uh, I, I don't score that positive or negative. It is what it is. It's just a traditional box layout. The negatives, same thing as I said in my boat, the trim buttons were in a bad place. You heard Chris make that comment. He wished they would not only not in a bad place, but the trim buttons are right next to the, to the on-off buttons for the aerator, which is a problem, right? Middle of the day, you trim your motor down, and an hour later, you realize you've turned the water off. That's a real problem. That, that needs to get fixed. And again, I put traditional box layouts over there. So I still think it's an extremely fishable boat. Not any better than my L boat. I scored a 17. It's slightly, uh, the beam is slightly smaller at 97 inches in the 20 foot boat, but in the 21 foot boat and the 521L, it's, it's the same, 78 inches. So I scored exactly the same 17 on fishability. Fit and finish. I scored a little better. And I scored a little better because I'm not hearing many of my buddies have the same problems on the L boat that I'm having in my C boat. Uh, it's got good carpet, it's got good glass, padded deck, it's got a real solid feel running, it's got lots of room in it, it's got good lighting, and again, as I talked about in the other videos, good feedback from fiberglass shops. They still say Ranger is a well-built boat. I still don't like the seats. I'm still hearing from my team guys. And by the way, Chris did not give me this feedback. This came from other guys that you can still bottom out in these seats. And actually, if you go back and look at my prior Ranger videos, there's two of them. I'll, you can see them right there. I'll stick a link in right there. Um, there's comments below from guys running elbows saying, no, still don't like the seats, still bottom out in the seats. So I'm going to score them 14, a little bit better, still good but better than what I scored mine because in fairness to Ranger, they're not, the, Chris and my other buddies have not seen the same kind of problems. I think they fixed some of the problems in the L boat that I'm still seeing in my C boat. And again, in fairness, my C boat's two years old. Maybe they fixed it in the C boat as well, but I scored my boat because that's what got me started down this process for looking. Okay, from a performance standpoint, I score the boat 14 good it's a very dry ride. It's a good big water boat, even though it's only a 20-foot boat. Uh, now, the way Chris had his boat propped out, now granted there were three of us in there, but he had it with a 24-pitch uh, three-blade fury to try to go faster, and it had a poor hole shot. And I know from talking to some other guys that with the elbow, so the elbow you'll see over there on the, on the negatives, it does not have the lift a sea boat has. That's a problem they've struggled with. Um, it's, it, so I said in my boat, it's Ranger fast. This boat's actually Ranger slow. This is just a slower boat. This is the same Mercury 250 four-stroke I run. This boat should be much faster because it's shorter and it's lighter than my boat. But it's wider, so it's given up some speed. So um, I scored it poorer on a performance standpoint. If I'm going to go to a shorter boat, I don't care that it's a little bit wider. Actually, it's not. It's a, it's a smaller beam. It's a 97-inch beam versus a 98 in mine. It's got a little bit more fishing platform, so the width carries forward further in the boat. But the performance for that boat should be better. I just I don't understand why they built a boat that doesn't perform as well as the prior boat series. That does not make sense to me. And trust me, that's the feedback I got from guys that are ranger guys that are forced to run this boat. Many, many, many of them have told me I would much rather go back and run my sea boat. So take that for what it's worth. Amenities, I score it 14 good. The USB plugs for your phone are in boxes. You can get a 12 inch unit in the dash. The seats are adjustable. It's got great storage in the boat. Uh, it's got the remote drain plug, the ventilated storage, padded deck, it's got better sump access than my boat does because you can get to the bilge pumps without pulling the battery charger, so they fixed that. And they added prop storage, as you saw it in the back of his boat. Uh, the negative specific to this boat, the 20 versus the 21, is it's only got the one ice chest, and it's that step ice chest, and it's a smaller ice chest. 
And I've put ice in both of mine, and that ice chest doesn't hold ice as well as my front ice chest. So I dinged it a little bit for the smaller ice chest, and it's not as good an ice chest. I did look. Now, you saw Chris had his mounted with the big 12-inch Garmin up behind the wheel, but up a little bit. But if it were mounted in the dash, you'd have the same problem. You'd have to lean forward to look at your graph on your in-dash graph. Now, I don't know that anybody can fix that. I think the only fix is for you to literally lift your mount, uh, for, for you to literally buy a mount that lifts your units up, which, of course, then you got to look over the top of them. But, again, it, the dash, so... It's not good that you can't see the graph well in the dash. It's kind of, from what I've seen, it's across all boats for in-dash mounts, but it seems like somebody can engineer that out. Uh, it's got the same cheap battery straps. You know, we talked, I've talked about that with Basscat. Uh, it's just the straps that you ratchet down to hold your batteries in place. Basscat certainly got something much nicer than that. And I'm going to do that, right? When I see something I like, a driver's cleat, I'm going to judge the rest of the boats based upon that because that's something I like and that's something... Just like a trailer brake, a parking brake on my trailer. That's something I like. Uh, trailers and other stuff. It's got the $500 option. You see Chris didn't add it. It's got LED backup lights, swing tongue, swing away tongue, all bath uh, hubs. It's a pretty, pretty trailer. It's got a good winch. It's got the parking brake on the trailer, torsion axles. You know, one of the advantages to Ranger generally is most of the places in the country you can get to a dealer pretty close. It's got brakes on all four tires. That is a cool option. Um, negatives, nothing new or revolutionary, kind of, uh, kind of like the other boat. And I said I wasn't going to talk a lot about price, but as I look at boats, to some degree I have to judge those boats based upon the prior boats. So I've got to judge this boat based upon my sea boat. And it's really interesting. If you pull it up on the Ranger website, which I did, the C boat's list price is lower than the L boat, but it's because there's nothing on the L boat. You have to build your options onto the L boat. So what I did was I built an L boat and a C boat on the website identical with the options on them, and the L boat's about $5,000 more expensive. It's slower, it's got less lift, and I don't, it's got a giant front deck. My front deck's big enough, right? Uh, I don't see anything in that boat that warrants another 5000 bucks. And since trailer and other stuff, other stuff's kind of my catch-all, I, I, I don't give them as many points here. The other boat, the, the, the 521C, scored 17 here. This boat only scores 15. Uh, and it's because, again, I just don't see the value for the more expensive boat. I, I, I just don't. So there you go. Uh, so that boat scores 74 good. It's a little bit less than the, uh, than the 521 C boat scored. And part of it's because it's a more expensive boat and I didn't see the value in it and the performance is a little bit less. Everything else, you know, I mean, you pick up a couple things. You pick up prop storage, which may be in the new C boats. I've not been able to see one of those yet. Um, there's a couple things there that are nice, but, you know, they, they changed the touch pads. Now, I don't know if that touch pad, if they're having a problem with those failing. Nobody has said that to me, and several guys had said in the sea boats they were having those touch pads fail. So that's probably why they changed touch pads, uh, which, again, I scored them better in fit and finish in this boat than I did in my boat. But overall, the score's still lower. It's a slower boat, doesn't have as much lift. Um, and it's more expensive, and I just, so I scored it a little bit lower at 74. So uh, there you go. That's my take on it. Okay, guys, so uh, the contingency prices, I forgot to stick this in here. Um, it's the same as it was on my boat. So on the, if you haven't seen that, check out the second part, which would be video six, I believe. I'll put it at the bottom if that's not right. Video six in this series would be part two of the Ranger 521 C boat and in that one I go in depth on the Ranger Cup and the contingency prizes there but I scored a 17 I scored excellent and you can see all the reasons why there so let's cut back to the other video since I forgot to stick this in there and uh, thanks guys I had hoped to have been in a Phoenix this past weekend but the fellow that I was supposed to get the Phoenix from forgot to return my phone call we weren't able to connect so I'm going to try to get in in the next two weeks a Phoenix and a Camus, 
and test those boats. I'm getting a lot of questions about what I'm going to test. Guys, I'm going to try to test them all. Uh, I'm not testing older boats. I'm only testing boats that are in current production. I want to test multiple Phoenixes. I'm going to test a Triton. I've been asked to, Blazer, Ballistic. If I can get a hold of a Bullet, heck, if I can get a hold of an Allison, I'll test one. I want to test a Vexus. Uh, that seems like the hardest boat to get a hold of, but I've got a guy who says he can get his Vexus down here to me. Uh, and I've been asked about metal boats. I would love to do this once I'm through with the, uh, with the glass boats and decide what I want to go back and do it on metal boats. So stick with me. Please be patient. Guys are like, why haven't you done a Bass Cat Lynx yet? I'm going to do another Bass Cat. I don't know if it's a Lynx or not. Guys, this is time consuming. <laughs> you have no idea. This is a day or two with the boat and then 20 or 30 hours of editing. So this is really time consuming. I will get to them. Be patient. If I could do if I didn't have to work and I could do them all in three weeks, I'd do it. I just can't do it. So bear with me. I'm trying to do the research. Uh, I'm doing everything I can to make these as accurate as I possibly can so you guys can learn and I can learn the differences in these boats and make a good buying decision because this is a lot of money, right? My first house cost $62,500. I'm spending more on a bass boat than my first house cost. And to that end, my electronics on my boat cost more than my first two boats. It's a lot of money. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to do my research. And if you'll be patient with me, I think we can figure this out as to what some of the best boats in the market are. And I suspect I'm going to buy a boat that might not be the best boat for you if you fish in timber, if you fish in river, if you've got to go fast, if you just want a super good ride. It's all in different things are important to different one of us, but I'll share with you what I see as the positives and negatives in every one of these boats, and we'll figure it out together. Thanks so much for tuning in. Please, if you enjoy these videos, click the like. That makes a huge difference for me with YouTube. Uh, and if you share it with your buddies, I really appreciate that as well. I'll have another video up for y'all uh, next week on whichever one of those two boats I can get in this week, either the Camus or the Phoenix, and several others we're going to look at over the next several weeks down here. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see y'all here again in just a couple days.